Good afternoon and welcome to the WFDF WUCC. My name is Hannah Penderby and I am joined in the booth this afternoon, this glorious sunny afternoon by Ian Toner. How are you feeling, Ian? Thanks for having me, Hanny. Very excited for today's matchup here in the mixed division. Just giving everyone a sense of where we're at for the entire World Ultimate Club Championships. Today, the mixed division is going to be concluding pool play. If you've been paying attention to any of our other streams and know about the other ones coming up later today, the men's and women's divisions are starting power pools. So lots of great action all around the field complex here in Lebanon Sports Complex. Right, you are in arguably a bit more of a brutal schedule side of things with six teams in the pools in the mixed division. So these games ever more crucial than perhaps the uh, pool plate for the men's and women's divisions with those power pools, allowing any misseedings to be kind of, you know, worked through in the mix. So looking at the previous results of these teams, Ian, how have they been faring thus far? Well, Black Sheep came in as one of the lower seeds of the entire tournament. I believe they were seeded 40th and they've fought admirably so far in Pool H. Two and two, a goal differential of negative nine, and they're going up against Disc from Spain. So far, they've fared with a one and three record, a negative two goal differential. Lots more for Disc to play for. Certainly, there was, uh, we were talking to Captain Ben Davies of the New Zealand side, and they really struggled in the first day of this tournament, having a bit more of a, uh, a mixed team, not really, kind of as a mix of local players in the New Zealand scene currently over there and expats who are kind of, you know, reconnecting and bringing things back together. How did they fare against uh, in those early stage games? Well, it, I think Ben Davies summed it up nicely when he said, we didn't feel like we truly arrived until yesterday when they were playing cleaner ultimate with fewer breaks. And it's really interesting to hear that because we also know that a lot of these players arrived a week before the tournament and had a week of practice to, to familiarize each other and integrate that expat community with the traditional New Zealand community. So surprising to hear about the tough start that they had, but good to hear that they're starting to find their stride as we wrap up pool play. And they certainly had a stormer of a game yesterday, caught the end of against Smog from the UK, taking that one. It was a very clean game indeed, just trading out in, and then they got a break at the very end. So turning to Moby Disc, a bit more of a um, sort of consolidated team. We're talking to Jeff, who do watch out for his absolutely sensational facial hair. He has this beautiful golden mustache that's right in the center of your screen right now. He and will win the mustache party, no question about it. Oh, he will. He will have some slight uh, slight competition from the likes of Jamie Cross of Clapham, but uh, fantastic stuff from his luscious locks. We we're talking to him and he was saying that Mubi Disc are they have mostly, so they're a Lanzarote-based team. They have some Tenerife players who are aboard, but also some good friends that they've played with in the German, sorry, sorry, in the European scene. They have some Germans amongst their ranks also. And they also mentioned as they were talking about the competitive conditions that they're going to be dealing with today, the wind that you may be noticing in the background on these flags, nothing new for them. These are conditions that they face normally in their hometown. And they said, hey, we're just going to come out and surprise people. We're not going to reveal any kind of game plan. We're going to do whatever works in the moment. They're going to be adapting to the conditions as the game unfolds. And so we will wait to see exactly how this one's going to play out. Could be anyone's game, I think, Ian. Certainly, if Black Sheep can find their form, they could surmount it. But uh, maybe just have a very, as you say, unexpected style. I had the pleasure of calling a game for them at the uh, windmill tournament. They were missing a few of their key styles there, so didn't have the most fantastic finish. But they'll come out hard and, uh, and look to throw together some fantastic ultimate here in this round 13 of play at the Lebanon Sports Complex. So rounding out Pool H, just to give you a sense of the other competition these teams have been facing so far, the Americans from Boston, Slow White, are sitting at the top of the pool right now. They're 4-0 and with a plus 31 goal differential. Japanese na national champions Cafe de Luida are sitting in second. They've got a 3-1 and record and a plus 5 goal differential. And then we start to get into the Black Sheep in third, Smog in fourth, Mubidisk in fifth, and Yanomani from Venezuela sitting there in sixth. 
So definitely a valuable game for the Spanish team to see if they can win this one. But talking about, actually, a little bit about Disc against the top seeds in the pool, Slow White, that's a 14-13 lost scoreline there. And Slow White has certainly come out, no pun intended, slower than they would have preferred. We had a chance to catch up with some of their leaders over at the party tent, Tournament Central, uh, earlier in the week. And he said, you know, credit to that team, Moby Disc, for battling through a, a turnover-laden game. But it felt like every 50-50 disc, every in-cut that sailed off someone's fingertips, found its way back to Moby Disc's fingers. And sometimes when you're getting all the breaks, that can be the margin that you need to keep the game close or either emerge on top. Well, we will see if fate shall favor Mubi Disc in this instance as we see an offside call as game advisors assisting. And that would be Melissa She signaling the offside with the, uh, the crossed raised hands. Good to see the WFDF hand signals here, Ian. Not saying that perhaps the US players are used to or, or yourself as uh, someone who usually covers the domestic scene over here in the States. Yeah, no, quite a few differences. Uh, I, I know the pick signal is quite different, whereas in America you'd be putting your hands on your hips in a power pose. Uh, there's there's something different. And I, I know all the players here have been getting quite a kick out of the double game point call, which looks quite like a dab with the game advisor signaling, putting their head essentially in their elbow pit. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps they uh, took some dance moves when they were coming up with that one. As Black Sheep get off to the races, but throw behind Captain Ben Davies. Early error. And so an instant zone look from Black Sheep. And an error straight back. Both teams looking a little nervous perhaps here, Ian. Yeah, this is their first showcase game, having played and streamed games before. The the nerves, the different mental energy, it's a it's a real gear shift. But there we do see a block off the hand of Mubi Disc. Rodriguez coming up for her team. And a shot in thin zone. That's a pretty decent grab there from the number 71, Taylor, sorry, 74, Taylor Westland. Well, not the cleanest start we've seen for either team, but it was clear that that Defensive pressure from Mubi Disc was frustrating Black Sheep. Some great poaching right off the start from Miguel Jimenez Pereira's earning that first block and good pressure after they got the disc back. Indeed. So, first point on the board, and it is a break of score to Mubi Disc. Just errant throws for Black Sheep this morning. That's Taylor Westland's third goal of the tournament. Taking a look at some of their other leading scorers. Unai Alastrue tallying up 15 points between goals and assists. Ricardo Marquez, 10 assists, four goals. Be interested to see them get involved in the offense as this game progresses. But first off, we'll have to see if Black Sheep can throw together some offense and not throw behind each other as we see a disc go to the ground outside the hands outstretched from Petra Horvath. Well, that's just an execution error. Hard to blame that one on the wind or the conditions. The swing was open. And we've seen greater performances from Tessa Jones, who's just a rising young star here at these championships. She actually won the Donovan Award competing at Swarthmore College. and. MVP award of sorts for the Division Three competition. Yeah, and she had a fantastic game yesterday. Really pivotal for their Black Sheep win over Smog from the UK. As we see Horvath pop it up the line. Horvath choosing to play in the mixed division. Pretty much every opportunity she gets, she loves the mixed division. I actually get the pleasure of playing with her back in the UK, Ian. But far what, side. Are, what, are, what are some of her greatest strengths when you've played with her as a teammate. She's a very calm handler. We'll see a little bit of contact there. Far side. Ben Davies on the floor. I think there was a bit of contact with Gonzalez by his shoulder. And an injury will be called. 
In terms of strength for Horvath, though, definitely she's a very solid and calm handler. She's got a lethal flick put, which uh, I'm usually the one kind of running towards the end zone trying to get her to put it, but... Well, no surprise to see her picking up on her own goal line then if she's got that poise and experience. Exactly, and I'm, I have to confess I am wearing our mixed team shirt to a little bit of support in the booth. But movie disc will charge down the field and there we see a strident Rebecca Fagan getting the run through block. Bit of a contact down the field, bit of friendly fire, I think. Yeah, that did look like an accidental pick Two defenders not aware of each other. George Rook on the floor by Gonzalez. And uh, as it was friendly fire, there'll be no formal stoppage in terms of any you know, discussions to be had, just everyone allowing the players to get back to their feet. So back in the action, Taylor, central of the field, near side to Horvath. Looking upfield, but good pressure from Umidis, not seeing much of what she looks. And there we see that flick put go up. Great attack and a snag from the hand of Rebecca Fagan. Double happiness for her. Well, the stall count was certainly rising. Great pressure from Movie Disc, shutting down all of the reset options. No easy place for Black Sheep to look. And then Horvath with a prayer to the back corner. Sometimes your athletes just have to make plays and Rebecca Fagan answers the call there. Certainly a very messy point though, Ian. Both teams struggling to find their form to any kind of clean offense. But that was a lovely huck it and hope to Fagan. Yeah, just two points in here, and we've already seen seven turnovers between the two teams. So one apiece as we go for a short. short. So both teams with a point on the board now, Ian, as the pull will go up to be received by a movie disc. And so Jeff on the far sideline. That, those long locks flowing that we were talking about a moment ago. So, Finja Gewitsch finds her <laughs> fellow German Schultz. She's going to put up a lovely floaty disc. Teeny bit of contact, but well read on by Ricardo Marquez. couple challenging things about that point. One, those same third shots provide very little margin for error. You're going down the same line. You got to get the length and the accuracy just on point. And number two, I'm just really not so sure about that bid from Taki Cookson. There's no way he makes a play on that disc without impacting the torso of the movie disc receiver. Definitely would have liked to see him pull up there. Yeah, not a uh, particularly intelligent play, but if anyone on this side of, for Mubidis can uh, put those flat same third throws, the hand of Katarina Schultz is probably one of them. She uh, plays her ultimate for the Germans, usually in the mixed division. She is actually part of the Sandstrom German national beach team who are absolutely phenomenal Ian. I don't know if you've had a chance to, to catch any of their games but I'd highly recommend watching their tape back. So 2-1 movie disc. The New Zealanders will have a chance to respond as we see Jones keeping the disc alive with a full stretch grab. Good to see Davies still out there and contributing after that injury just a few moments ago. Corey Cox finds Lothian in the center of the field. Another big thrower. He's going to put it up for Davies and an easy one-handed catch. Great recognition there by Davies. You see him putting his hand up because he had kind of stopped his deep cut and hesitated once he had gotten to the back of that stack. But once he stopped the deep cut, the throw actually went up. So great recognition and adaptation 
and clearly credit to Adam Lothian for putting enough throw, float on that throw, providing Davies the opportunity to get underneath it. Well, Davies is a very big target indeed. I think he saw the height mismatch and said, well, even if he, you know, it's a little bit late, I reckon you've got that. Lothian playing in the domestic scene in the UK also, he, uh, as well as a number of these Black Sheep players, plays for Fire of London. He'll be hanging around for the US Open, which I know Fire were absolutely delighted to be attending this year. Many players actually choosing not to play in the mixed division in order to be able to be on the team and make that tournament. Gewitch, far sideline. Finds the reset. It's going to be a swing across to Nunez. Great job of Black Sheep pushing the movie disc offense backwards. Not really advancing up the field. We're going to see a big shot go up. Lots of bodies under it. And they're going to sail over the heads of them all. Well, great recognition there by Ricardo Marquez to peel off and be a secondary option after that throw went up. But felt like he could have turned on the Jets and had he laid out, he would have maybe had an opportunity to make a play on that disc. Difficult though when you're coming in to try and back someone up to, to really get a clean read with the bodies in the way. But Black Sheep now, opportunity to take a break. See Hannah Stevenson on the disc. Into a player known in the UK as only as Marius. Big backhand. It's going to be taken away by Mubidisc. Excellent heads up from Alastre. It's going to flick it to the back and it's going to sail over the top of the outstretched hand. Not nope. to be. Taken away by the wind, perhaps, Ian. No sense of urgency there from Marius Hutchinson. After that disc kind of sailed over his head, the Mubidisc receiver made a second attempt on it, but Marius was unfazed. We're going to see a big floaty one. I'm not sure is that going to come back in. No defensive play made by Ricardo Marquez. And Hannah Stevenson was looking at it and seeing if he could might maybe tiptoe. But uh, if the defender touched it, of course, it will now have the whole field to push back. Whereas if they'd maybe let, let Stevenson try and make a play on that just on his own. I think he wouldn't have towed it in, Ian. And that's why those outside in hucks on your own goal line that trail out of bounds but have to come back in bounds are such a risky proposition in a windy game like this. You could end up giving yourself some terrible defensive field position if you don't get that disc back in bounds. Yeah, something we've seen on this show pitch done very well is actually just using expansive break side hucks rather than trying to throw it down the line with this win quite blasting towards us at this point. It's really picked up since this morning. Yeah, just to give a sense of that to our viewers on the stream, we're here on this near sideline. So the disc is, the wind is kind of proceeding from those bleachers over there on the far sideline, straight across the pitch to the near sideline, a stiff crosswind for those throwers to deal with. And we'll see a timeout call here. I think quite wise, just uh, allowing both sides just put their, uh, put their minds together and focus down a little bit. An interesting feature of the bleachers actually that you mentioned Ian on the far side is that they provide a tiny bit of shelter I think on that far sideline. So in the midsection of the field you kind of get lulled into a false sense of security but then when you're exposed at either end zone suddenly the wind picks up and the adjustment is very tricky. Absolutely and having played in and broadcasted major games in stadium settings it's so much different and it's almost like there's kind of wind tunnels in each corner and pockets of air that just appear out of nowhere and when you're competing all weekend on the vastness of a polo club that has nothing but flat land around and all of a sudden you've got to recalibrate those throws in a stadium setting You've got to spend a significant amount of time running drills in the end zone, practicing to get yourself familiar with those wind conditions before the game starts. So let's see if that timeout has managed to cool the heads of either side. 
Rodriguez on the disc currently. He's going to bring it back in with a mark of Hannon Stevenson. And a nice clearing initiation play there from Mubi Disc. Two host stack cutters from that far side just streaking deep, opening up space for that underneath cross field initiation cut. And again, we'll see Rodriguez centralize, finds Govic. Good handler marks from the uh, black sheep side there, Ian, really making those windows difficult for the reset for Govic. Yeah, and if even if they're not getting a hand on the disc and swatting it down, the intimidation and the proximity can be a real intimidating factor and enhance the defense. And so New Zealand now looking a bit more confident than before. I uh, miss Q throw. I think she was trying to hit Stevenson there, but Chu going to ground to try and keep it alive. And so Mubi Dis now back on the attack towards the left side of this field in front of us. Oh, a little stumple there, but well recovered. Finds the hands of Schultz. Are we going to see another flat same third throw? The two ladies of Schultz and Govic getting very free. So we see a shot to the end zone into the hands of Ricardo Marquez. Good reception. Well, you called it, Hanny. Another same third shot down in that red zone. Great understanding of the wind conditions, bending that outside in flick just as much as was needed to get that into the hands of Ricardo Marquez. And so that is 3-2 Mibi Disc over Black Sheep of New Zealand. it early. Help us teach kids about cancer symptoms through Ultimate Frisbee Clinics. Join us and speak up. Welcome back to the action here as we see Paul H. Round 13. We are in Tuesday play at this World Ultimate Club Championships. And I'm joined in the booth today by Ian. Ian, how do you feel about uh, Black Sheep's offense so far this game? Well, if nothing else, they've been disciplined and consistent in their structure. Up until this zone look, we saw them sticking to a pretty fundamental vertical stack to initiate this offense. But as you ask about this. Oh, and look at that separation. A ninja sneaks into the end zone in the form of Rebecca Fagan. We've seen her make some huge athletic plays, but that one, she was just stood there quietly, silently, all alone. Well, that's good field awareness, right? When you've got to space the defenders against a zone and force them to make decisions about which area of the pitch they're going to protect, which defender or receiver they're going to match up with most closely, you've got to work in tandem with your other cutters and communicate and understand how you're going to stretch those options and open up the throwing lanes for your handlers. And at the end of the day, that deep shot down that sideline was exactly what the doctor ordered for the Black Sheep offense. And seeing this laying form of Jimenez, I was uh, pleased to see the fact that Fagan just trusted her own read in the clap catch, didn't go and attack it, because if she had, that could have been a pretty heavy collision there. Yeah, there's something to be said for body control and responsibility before you take off, and great work there by the Mubidisc defender preserving player safety and keeping that paramount. And so Mubi Dis will now look to respond three apiece as the current standing score. Big hug of their own is going to go up. Is it going to be too much yet? Just tips off the fingers. All right, here's the question we've all been waiting to ask. If he shaves the mustache, does he have that extra bit of lift to get a finger on that? <laughs> You know what, Ian? I'm going to say no, because I think actually all of his upward force is in fact generated through the power of the stash. It's got to be. That's where the magic happens. 
in the middle of his face, as we'll see New Zealand with a overthrow of their own. It's costly, unforced errors from both sides at this stage of the game. Hopefully we can see both teams cleaning it up, get a bit of uh, soap out. Maybe a little, little polish as well, you know, buff things up nicely. There's a <laughs> call on the field. Everyone now checking that uh, all of the positions are set. And we'll get back in play. Again, we're seeing discs just going up that far side. Stevenson with a big fake. Sent us to Carter. No one appears to really be giving Kelly Carter much of a, a mock to have to deal with. Seems to be controlling the offense and anchoring things right now. She finds Stevenson up the line. There's a shot available deep and he's going to take it. Backing Esther Young and uh, just throwing it really wildly there, Liam. And I think the wind had a lot to do with that one really being off the mark. When you expose that downward face of the disc underneath the rim, it's gonna be pushed and susceptible to the forces of the wind that much tougher. And that disc, an outside in shot, bending into the wind, clearly pushed and came back to this near sideline a lot more than originally intended. Uh, Stevenson, a long time player for the Kiwi side, now based in the UK, but not, some have argued, not quite the player he used to be. Not maybe as fast or is in such good shape, but movie disc will work it between themselves as we'll see a little stumble from Ricardo Marquez trying to keep it alive, but Hutchison will throw a lovely toss, two toss backhands <laughs> thrown behind Stevenson. I was uh, throwing a little bit of shade saying that he was perhaps a little bit past his best, but I don't think anyone would have got that shot. Well, sometimes a spoonful of patience is all the D-line offense needs to convert and inspire confidence in their own team. And just a couple of rushed throws that weren't totally necessary, wasting that opportunity. And well, this is turning into quite the sloppy point for the early stages of this game. Fatigue's gonna start to play a role pretty soon. It's very warm. We're talking about the wind, but the sun is beating down on the pitches today. We've had some humid and overcast conditions, but it's blazing sunshine out there. I'm glad we're in this booth right now, Ian. Quite fortunate to have our little perch shaded from the sun. You see a little contact between Trench and Stevenson. Nice isolation of the uh, two German women downfield. Govich and Schultz. And look at the separation currently on Schultz. She's uh, very, very deep. Yeah, if anything, she'd be a good anchor for the back of the stack at this moment as you see her initiating and coming underneath, but a double cut took away her lane. Again, Mubi Disc on that far side. No one really wanting to come across towards us, Ian. Perhaps they think we smell. I did get a workout in this morning, but I, I'll promise you that I showered before I came to the fields. So let's just go through process of elimination here. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm up windy, and so if you're if if it's if I'm the culprit, then you're going to get a, a a wonderful bouquet being <laughs> ever so slightly downwind of me as we get a disc thrown up and a very solid take by Marquez going up very strong there, Ian. Really interesting to see both of these teams having quite a liking for those same third shots blading outside in in that corner of the end zone. That's the third goal we've seen completed in that manner on that portion of the pitch. And, you know, obviously when that one went up, it really does not look like a high percentage shot. But the more movie disc comes down with those, <laughs> maybe we have to start rethinking our analysis calculus. <laughs> Well, certainly all the action, as you say, that far side shooting to our left as we see the field of play in that adventurous shot behind. 
Stevenson actually did a pretty good job of getting his hand to the disc, but unfortunately, I think his, uh, his feet were taking him too far the other direction as we see that take. So that's the third goal of this first half for Ricardo Marquez, clearly figuring prominently in the movie disc offense. <laughs> Fagan there has a little look at the disc as she trots by it, almost like she was about to pick that one up, but thinks better of it and uh, retakes her roll upfield as we see her on the far side again, shooting towards the left-hand side of this field. All the action so very far away from us, Ian. Oh, and a very low hammer directly into the floor. Pick's been called upfield. Not sure if he'll be redeemed for that poor throw. Well, I think we saw the throwing window that he was looking at. Oodles of space over on that break side. But subpar execution, and I believe the players are having a discussion about where the disc goes back to given the pick call earlier in the point. As we see some consultation with the game advisor. Well... I mean, you heard the words that came out of my mouth, Ian. I, uh, I think perhaps if that one's going to come back, then the number 17, Ethan Taylor, I think he's uh, going to have to chalk that one up to being fully redeemed, as you say, a, a poor execution of hitting that breakside space. So the disc will come back. He shall be redeemed. Let's see if Taylor can hit that break side immediately or if he's going to choose a perhaps more conservative option than the hammer. Though we do, of course, love a good overhead on a live stream, giving the fans what they want. If you are listening at home, please do get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at WFDF Live. We will endeavor to try and check that as we see an upline cut from Taylor. He's got Davies, he's going deep into that zone. Resets available, chooses the risky shot to Davies and Black Sheep making very good use of his height. Once again, stall count rising, great defensive pressure. And Black Sheep having to resort to a bailout of sorts, just like we saw earlier in this first half with that crossfield blade from Horvath to Rebecca Fagan, but the size and athleticism of these black sheep receivers really proving to be an asset when their offense stagnates. Yes, having torn and athletic players, oftentimes a valuable, if not essential, get out of jail free card. But Ian, that's not gonna see you go very far into this championships if you're relying on players like that to come up with the goods on stall eight or nine. Yeah, you need structure, discipline, complete buy-in and adherence to a cohesive strategy. Something we've seen in many of the other top mixed contenders like Amp out of Philadelphia, really excited to see them play as this tournament progresses. Last. We will focus though on the action at hand as Mubi Disc come out with a nice horizontal stack. Good movement between the handlers. Nice little spot of weaving to set up the deep shot. I think that's going to be way too far. Indeed, that will hit the ground just inside the end zone, but way beyond the intended target of Yazir Ramos Diaz. So another point, another turn. Black Sheep working things nice smoothly. Gonna look for the pop pass, decides to just focus on the one handler, it gets free, puts it deep. Is it gonna be a bit, oh, that was pretty close. I like the uh, placement on that throw to Cookson, but just 
unable to make the grab. A little bit too far. Good to see the handlers moving, though, and setting up that deep shot quite nicely. Yeah, taking advantage of that in a quasi-power position on the break side. Bit of an adventurous shot for Sultz, but it is reeled in. And now Mubi just with the opportunity on the end zone line. Not much movement happening, really, in the end zone. Yeah, interesting to see three handlers out in this set. And, and once again, Johnny on the spot. Ricardo Marquez with his fourth goal in that same corner of that far end zone. This is getting a little bit ridiculous, Ian. I think shooting to the left, the only spot, perhaps, I don't know, maybe the wind is just more powerful on the left side of the field to the right. Maybe there's some, you know, I don't know, disturbance, like perhaps a wizard <laughs> sat behind <laughs> the bleachers, you know, concocting a spell a la Harry Potter. Who knows? But either way, I mean, it's working, but it doesn't look the most comfortable. They are putting up shots. You know, if I think there must have been a defensive miscue there for the players that have had so much separation. So I think someone was caught asleep on Marquez because that disc sat for a very long time. Yeah, I'd love to get another look at that end zone defensive set because more often than not, when teams buckle down in the end zone, yes, you can keep your person-to-person -person assignments, but you can also run some strategic switching, clamming, zone-type defenses that pass off assignments between players and defenders. So the pull shall land out of bounds. And in talking about the uh, the stylistic facial hair on movie disc, look at the, uh, the attire on double zero as we see a run-through block from Rodriguez. Hopefully we'll get a little chance to have a shot of the, uh, the, the trousers that Zero is wearing. It's just as he trots off screen. Yeah, joggers, sweatpants, very in vogue in the ultimate Frisbee community. Clearly skirting the rules and regulations for uniforms. <laughs> well, there we see pure speed attacking the back corner of the end zone from Oscar Gonzalez. That was just, like I say, just pure speed foot racing there, Ian. Yeah, and as a defender, if I'm guarding him at the front of the stack, I know that that is the one area of the pitch that I have to defend, the four side cone. Tough to see that get beat there. If you want to be a high performer, eat like one. Start with a balanced diet and drink plenty of water. Good nutrition is one of the best ways to boost your mental and your physical health. In the mixed division here at the WFDF 2018 World Ultimate Club Championships, we have Black Sheep wearing their black and fetching blue shirts and Movie Disc in the white. Movie Disc just having gotten a break. Black Sheep will now look to respond as Cox breaks to Lothian. Has Davies up the line but chooses not to. There's a travel call by Gonzalez. Yeah, interesting discussion here. It looks like Gonzalez is calling the travel, but Lothian is always in, also insisting on a foul shoulder contact as he was pivoting. I, from here, that looked like a textbook foul. He wasn't respecting his disc space. And so an uncontested foul will allow Lothian to put it deep, very flat, far left corner. Davies using his height and immediately spiking the disc, lofting it up. Big battle between him and Kelsey Bilek. Lots of contact, a little bit of just, you know, muscling together. 
Yeah, I, I can't imagine that that's the top and featured play in the Black Sheep offensive playbook, so to speak. But again, the size, athleticism, reach, frame of all of those Black Sheep receivers proving to be valuable in these windy conditions. And it is a strategy that is employed to many people's dismay, but it is ultimately very effective in more ways than one. And thus, Black Sheep responds 6-5 to Mubi Disc. But certainly, and I don't see any reason why we couldn't see a break back now from Black Sheep. They're going to need one. If they're going to keep the dream alive. Otherwise, Mubi Disc puts himself in a very powerful position in terms of coming into the second half. Obviously, both breaks in this game having thus far gone to Mubi Disc. Black Sheep will need to find that little something extra. So current patience, nearly a peel off defensive play. And a beautiful sitter gonna be reeled in by Fenjigovic. I think, Ian, that's one of the nicest throws we've seen go into the end zone. Lovely into space. Gavich just able to run that one down. Didn't curve and, you know, sit in any kind of lethal way, but just really hung out there and allowed her to just go and scoop it up. Fantastic touch on that release. And, you know, there are a lot of differing philosophies when trying to hit receivers deep. I think I'd like to put throwers sizing up their deep shots in two categories. One, you've got Japanese throwers. Two, you've got the rest of the world. Japanese throwers are notorious for blading their deep shots all the way past the receiver to that far shoulder so that it's on the break side and the defender has absolutely no play at the disc. But pretty much everyone else likes to put things flat, out to space, not a lot of curve on it. And that's just the way these players have been taught and brought up as they've come up through their youth systems, learned the game at university, and can continue to compete on the international stage. Which do you feel is more effective, Ian? I, personally, I find the Japanese deep propositions to be a little riskier because they require a greater level of precision and there's less margin for error. When you're throwing a flat throw, there's more opportunity for those deep shots to sit and players to run onto them or adjust their course and body out as needed. And to me, it feels like some of those Japanese deep shots are kind of an all or nothing game. That being said, we've seen such success from teams like Uno and Huck and the Buzz Bullets, who of course are not here. Even Shinshu Luce, the mixed team who won on double game point yesterday. And talking about points, that's a lovely block to stop. Black Sheep from taking this game to 7-6. Muradisk on stride in the lead. They are, if they can put this in the bank, gonna take half, but there is a foul call by the looks of things. Gonna have the game advisors stepping in this one to discuss Melissa, she, and Ruben Berg. So she's gonna stay on the sideline. Berg's gonna get involved and offer the perspective. I, I like the game advisors at the world stage, and I like the neutral point of view they can bring, but how much involvement they uh, they have in calls is very very different amongst the diff international scenes. Many players here not used to at all having any kind of outside intervention other than being able to ask the sideline for out of bounds or inbounds calls. trying to figure out what exactly Ruben Berg is explaining. Fagan was involved in the play there in the end zone. Wondering if we might get another look at the play that we're currently discussing. And so, Fagan goes up. It doesn't really appear to be any contact there between Fagan 
Yeah, that looked like a clean block on Gonzalez Betancourt's part. Perhaps, uh, I don't know, maybe she's calling dangerous play, but that's not the correct hand signal for that. But uh, seems like it's going to be some kind of contested call. We're going to go back to the last uncontested section of play. So disc will be in the hands of Black Sheep. Wasn't the nicest shot into the end zone. Hopefully they can look to move the disc around a little wee bit more, change the angle of attack. And so up the line it goes, not able to jump it in, but pick is gonna be called. End zone stack is looking rather messy. All right now, just sort of a cluster towards that far side. And a violation, lovely signal, like a gymnast finishing a maneuver. And speaking with some of the players here on the sideline, it does appear that Fagan was calling a dangerous play foul, initiating and claiming that she pulled up and stopped her cut because she felt someone was coming into her space at a dangerous speed and angle. Well, a good idea certainly to bail out of those plays and avoid the contact, especially always trickier in the mixed division with the different sizings of players. Some very dense individuals on the field versus perhaps smaller statured players. But Fagan's definitely gonna want to be on the field for the entire tournament. So she's gotta look after. Ultimately, Ian, I think it's the player's own responsibility as well. When faced with a, an incident where contact might occur, you know, you gotta look out for yourself and kind of, you know, bail out and have the discussion. I honestly think dangerous play isn't called enough. And there are a lot of very, very big and heavy fouls. So back in the action here. After the call, opportunity red zone, and that disc is gonna pop out of the hands. That was a, uh, a bit of a desperate shot, I think. Yeah, I think the stall count was rising once again, just had to take a shot to the end zone. And the disc gonna go up with a shot that's gonna sit for a long while. That's a very nice put, one player isolated in the space. But great work from the muck. Can't hold it up for long enough though, and Mubi Disc will take half. And so, movie disc, three points clear of Black Sheep in this pool game. Pool H, all still to play for with the Brutal Division format. We'll be back very shortly. There is a place where we are us at our best. A place where everyone is welcome, regardless of age, shape, skin color, or anything else that tries to box people in. A place where we defy the odds and even defy gravity. A place that knows grit, knows grace, knows bright lights, and knows empty bleachers. A place where we remember to laugh, where we learn to trust and eventually even learn to fly. A place where character, community, and competition are all as balanced as a disc in flight. That place isn't in a stadium or on a field. That place is in the spirit of our players. Because we don't just play ultimate, we live ultimate. Welcome back. The sun is shining. The weather is gusting into the commentary booth. Conditions are very spicy right now in this pool play game. Ian, it's been a very interesting one thus far. Lots of unforced errors from both sides at the start of the game, but I feel like Mubi Disc have been treasuring the disc a little bit more than New Zealand right now. How do you think they can clean this up? 
Well, they really started settling in as the first half progressed. And if anything, I think Black Sheep is going to need to get a little more comfortable initiating resets late in the stall count. We've seen a number of their primary and secondary dump options get shut down, and they've had to bail out with blades to the corner of the end zone. They've got to find another way to get a reliable reset option when that defense clamps down so that they continue that offensive flow with their fundamental traditional vertical stack. And so what have movie disc as we see them in our shot, having a chat, getting some much needed shade coming out of Lanzarote, but you know, these conditions are hard for anyone. What adjustments have movie just made that have really been paying off for them? Well, they've thrown a variety of defensive looks that have really forced Black Sheep out of their traditional verticals, vertical stack comfort zone. And when they've earned those turnovers, they've been a little more efficient, not perfect, but with the disc from a D-line offense perspective. Three for eight on break opportunity so far in the first half. You compare that against Black Sheep's performance, 0 for 5 on break chances, and that's precisely the margin here with that three goal lead at half. So Black Sheep will come out on offense after this half is wrapped up. As we see Mubi Disc coming in for their circle. I wouldn't put it past Black Sheep, they certainly if they can find a little bit more of the form they found yesterday afternoon against Smog, they looked very, very tight indeed. It just seems, I think we've had some moments of brilliance. I really enjoyed watching Kelly Carter work in the backfield. He, she was identified by uh, Black Sheep as one of their most wily handlers, really anchoring the offense at points. But like you say, those resets being shut down very effectively by the defense of Mubidis. So 8-5 at half. We'll be back very, very shortly with more of action. Welcome back to the action live here on field A of the stream. The showcase pitches here at the WFDF 2018 World Ultimate Club Championships. On your screen right now, we have a wonderful shot. Well, now of the uh, of the movie just players warming up, we did have Ruben Berg and Melissa Sheila, beautiful and wonderful game advisors. We are so honored to have with us at this tournament offering the valuable neutral perspective. But Black Sheep behind three breaks to Mubi Disc of Spain. Certainly conditions are not perfect for Ultimate. A little bit of a breeze and the weird effect of the breaches that we were speaking about earlier, Ian. But uh, should we have a little look maybe at some of the highlights thus far of this mixed division game? Earlier on, turnover-laden points got things started for both teams. And as we saw, that same third corner of that far end zone was a popular destination for goal scorers. As both Disc and Black Sheep relied on the strength and athleticism of their receivers like Marquez and Fagan and others, to reel in those deep shots, no matter how difficult the wind conditions or defensive pressure was. Well, we'll see if we can see more of the same in that third, or if we'll use different parts of the pitch. Have to wait to find out, as we'll bring you the action from the second half.
catch it early. Help us teach kids about cancer symptoms through Ultimate Frisbee Clinics. Join us and speak up. No kid should have an overuse injury. Limit young ones to one sport per season, save sport specialization for later, and cross train with your kids. Parents and kids will both benefit. And we are back on this beautiful, sunny Tuesday afternoon. New Zealand's black sheep pulling for Mubi Disc of Spain. The Lanzarote-based team, three breaks up currently in this pool matchup. Not really ex sure who we see turning up. Both teams have had interesting results in the division thus far. But certainly Mubi Disc looking them far more capable as we see their players spread wide across the pitch. Great spacing right now. Great strategic adjustment from Black Sheep coming out of half here. They've thrown this zone that has given them at least two opportunities at block so far in this point. They just haven't pulled the trigger. And it will now slow Movie Disc's offense as we are about 10 meters out of the end zone. Opportunities available. Nice conservative play from Movie Disc. Nice patience on the disc as we see a transition now from Black Sheep into match coverage. Poach available far side. Not going to be taken. Still counts down again. A little high, but a release valve in the center of the field is found. Lots of passes being thrown by Movie Disc, which is no bad thing. But credit to the, obviously the defense. And a big one goes up. Lots of bodies under, and a uh, bit of friendly fire there, I think. Once again, Ian, we're seeing a disc that's just put up and sits. Yeah, it looked like we were gonna have a foul call, but I'm not sure where the contact initiated. It looked like Alastrue may have forced his defender into Gaywich, and that's the contact that she felt. Yeah, I think uh, we saw the the widespread hands of, whoa, I was trying to avoid it. I got pushed. I got pushed by your buddy. Yep. <laughs> Not my fault. <laughs> so good to see that one discussed quickly and taken away. Marius Hutchison with some tasty footwork near side. He's going to put it deep to Stevenson, and he's going to run that in. That is a good connection. Very nice work from Hutchison. And there we go. Black Sheep get their first break on the board, Ian. Well, things looked a little dicey on that initiating underneath cut to Hutchison, but he did not waste any time shooting deep. And once again, these same third shots proving effective. And more importantly for Black, for Black Sheep, they've got some life now, earning a, a really important break right out of the half. So, a response immediately comes from Black Sheep after Mubi just taking the half, saying, no, we're not done yet. We're going to get back in this game with 50 minutes just under left on the clock. Lothi in there with the pull. But uh, Hutchison, I can tell you, Enan, is known for his lethal lefty flicks. Very, very hard to shut down and particularly useful, it seems, in the mixed division. Seems to have a bit more success in that division. In the UK, we play both. We play, you are, uh, they, you're able to play both the mixed season, which happens in the winter in less favorable conditions. And then when it gets to this time of year, teams will then split out into open and women's sides. Perhaps the, uh, the practice in the <laughs> poor conditions in the spring in the UK, allowing him to develop those throws and use them a bit more effectively. It's obviously throwing prowess in windy and unpleasant conditions. And Hutchison staying out here again on this deep point. And a deep shot's gonna go. 
It's going to be batted away that's by Hutchison. And that's tremendous awareness. He was guarding the sizable deep threat, Jeffrey James Trench on Moby Disc, peeled off his assignment to get there and prevent Moby Disc from bidding and having any opportunity at reeling that deep shot in. A great heads up play after the Moby Disc player was so very free from her own mark. So Hutchison strides to the front line of the end zone. Has a deep look in the form of Adam Lothian. Unusual to see Lothian in the backfield. Typically it will be in the handler set. Hutchison's going to go up the line. It's going to be put in front. Going to use a speed. Easy layout grab just patiently <laughs> going to the floor. And then, oh my goodness, was that up or down, Ian? It looks like Lothian will admit that few blades of grass touched that before it reached his fingertips. Huge miscommunication, but great heads up from Lothian to tr nearly get his fingers underneath that one as we see Trench far sideline, moustache bristling in the sunlight. Movie Disc in that favoured far left third. Disc going to come across though, and a little, little jump from Trench to secure the goal. Well, a golden opportunity missed there for the Black Sheep D-line, forcing another turnover, another chance to break, keep building that defensive momentum that they need to climb back into things coming out of half and just not entirely sure what Hutchison was thinking on that release. Maybe he thought Lothian was going to be staying put on that far sideline, but at the end of the day, opportunity missed. And Moby Disc still up, 9-6. Yeah, just as you say, you know, I think it touched a, a tip of the grass there on that far side. And great closing speed from Lothian, though. And finally, we see another score, this time out of the hands of Moby Disc. Not quite as far to the, uh, the yeah. near side <laughs> of that left end zone as the previous lefty flick put of Hutchison. But uh, nice to see a bit more expansive use of the left side of the field. The spirit of those blady shots to the end zone still present on that shot. And an out of bounds pull will be centered by Petra Horvath. She'll be joined in the back handler set by Cox. Big shout out to our crew bringing you some of this great live drone footage. Those of you who've played FIFA or other games reminding you of these all 22, all 14 looks. I mean, for game analysis, Ian, this is a fantastic view. But uh, those of fans joining the stream from home, they can uh, pretend to be playing a bit of uh, Frisbee FIFA, perhaps. Yep. With their, uh, you know, it's sort of like imagining the ghost hand set in your hands as we have a bit of a bit of a discussion on the field. But definitely pressing lots of X and O oh, and square and triangle buttons, my memory serves. <laughs> Just got to be sure which console you're talking about, but I'm sure you're right. Oh, X is usually, there's usually an X button on, on whatever <laughs> handset yeah. there is. Yeah. No matter which platform you prefer. And so, Black Sheep, back off in action. Big shot's going to go deep. Lothian's got a good look at it, but unfortunately the defender had better position. Jimenez bats it to the floor. And Ethan Taylor telegraphed that shot the whole way. He saw Lothian starting his deep cut from very shallow. The defender, Miguel Jimenez Perez, keyed in on it from the start. Oh, and a disc just going past the hands of Padilla. Maybe we're starting to see some errors come back into movie disc. There's going to be a little marking infraction with Cox. Players down the field have paused. There's uh, not confirmed. Uh, and it looks like violation was called twice. Not sure if that was on a fast stall count, but if that was the case, the count does need to reset and drop to zero. Another stoppage here 
contact downfield. Dean, a little bit of confusion there for the, uh, the two players, not using the WFDF hand signals to s communicate to the upfield and a drop there, plain and simple from the hand of Taylor. Just looks down at dismay his, at his wrists. Early shot goes up, sits, sinks into the back, middle section into the arms of Oscar Gonzalez. 10 6 now. Movie disc leads over Black Sheep. The clock's starting to wind down on the window for this Black Sheep comeback, and tough to see. A couple turnovers on that point from Taylor. Unfortunately, his assignment taking him to the house. Yeah, it's definitely a game of unforced errors and Mubidisc are making fewer of them. We'll be back after this very brief break. Do you want to avoid overuse injuries? Cross train. Get your exercise routine out of a routine and mix it up with a variety of activities. Your muscles, tendons, and joints will thank you later. Welcome back to the Pool H action. Closing games of pool play in the mixed division as we see New Zealand's black sheep really desperately needing the offensive hold as we see Fagan throw directly into the ground. Wind really picking up Ian, but I think that was just a plain old simple error. So Mubi Disc with a chance for a second break. Big snag there, not the easiest throw. But it's going to take the deep shot. That's going to be another hanger. And a well batted away by the defender. Yet lack of discipline there from that D-line offense. I didn't see Wayne ha Wade Hankin take a look at his dump once before releasing that deep shot. <laughs> he certainly had more high percentage options to turn to before floating that outside in backhand up into the end zone. So... Cox will bring it back in play. Bit of poaching in the lane from Mubidis, trying to clog the channel. Nice grab from Horvath on a spicy pass. Poached isn't very effective in this instance. Belek working nicely. Jones on the disc. Fagan's got separation deep. Oh, Belek has to go full stretch. But unfortunately, gets this knocked out of our hounds by contact with the ground. And so is that a timeout call? It is indeed. I think that's wise here, Ian. Multiple turnover point. Having difficulty with the discipline and decision making of your D-line offense. An opportunity here to really put the nail in the coffin, so to speak. As good a time as any to regroup and dial up the structure and play calling that you'll want to put this game to bed. And if they can eke out a wee bit more of daylight between the two score lines, currently sitting at 10 6, I know that will certainly be valuable. We're, as you may be able to hear, the wind uh, no longer caressing us in the booth now, Ian. It is whipping through. Perhaps you'll be able to catch that on the audio. Great team, Fulcrum Pro, making us sound great this afternoon. And we'll see Black Sheep trying to keep cool in the beating sun. So swirling conditions, lots of errors from both sides. But if Movie Disc can get a break here, that'll certainly be a statement, a flag planted firmly in this game. Well, if Disc are able to win this one, lots of contingencies that still need to play out. A number of games still wrapping up this round in Pool H. Slow White and Smog tied at 11s as we speak. Cafe 
De Luida laying the beat down on Venezuela's Yanomami 12-3, but a movie disc win would do wonders for their point differential and for their head-to-head -head strength as they would end up with the same record as Black Sheep but have that important head-to-head -head victory as we look into tiebreakers at the conclusion of pool play. So, movie disc with it all to win, all to take. Currently up, and having taken that time out, a zone look from Black Sheep doing a wonders, and she throws directly into the head of Tessa Jones, but it's gonna be a foul call on the throw. Poor Vath signals with the hands that she uncontested. It was bizarre to see her throw directly into the face of Jones, but uh, high pressure applied. Trying to trap this near side. Transition now, match defense, Fagan tries, but she is far too late to prevent Taylor Vestland from taking that valuable second break in this half. School now, 11-6. Well, Vesland was able to find that soft spot in the Black Sheep zone two times consecutively in the red zone there, just sitting a few yards behind the cup where that cup defender isn't going to pay full attention and maybe pass off to the second layer or second tier of the zone defense. And those wings on this near side not recognizing and adjusting quickly enough to take away that threat. Credit to the movie disc spacing and forcing those wings to make tough decisions about the areas on the pitch that they're gonna be taking away. Especially in that red zone area where an error like that can be very costly indeed, as Black Sheep just found out. So, movie disc, a full five points clear now, Ian. Five breaks of score versus the only just one from Black Sheep. Fagan near sideline. Fakes and then finds Jones. So now we see shooting left. Finally, all the offense happening up this near sideline. You see Jones directing the offense with her hands explaining exactly where she wants some of those cuts to take shape. Indeed. It's been an adjustment from Mubi to suddenly forcing backhand, perhaps getting wise to uh, the lefty flick from before, and that's a lovely up the line cut from Ethan Taylor. Much needed goal for Black Sheep, try and stem the bleeding in this second half. Well, like you said, Hanny, after a three-point run from Mubidisk, Black Sheep needs something to hold on to, something to start turning the tide and a convincing offensive hold is a good place to start. I'd love to see on this deep point another iteration of that zone we saw just out of half that really gave the Black Sheep defenders, multiple plays on the disc. They may not have actually pulled the trigger and laid out and gotten their hands on those blocks, but if anything, creating that chaos, creating those opportunities is keeping your defense in the game and giving yourself the greatest chance to claw back into things. I too would be excited to see that. It did make maybe this have to throw pass after pass after pass. Frustrating defense. Appears to be a match set we've got though. As we see, Movie Disc's O line centering to the field, nice and patient. Not too much movement in the backfield right now, which is uh, not giving the thrower many options at all. Back to that far sideline, same throw, huck, same third huck into the hands of Alistre. And I think. Uh, Cookson caught sleeping on the defense there completely, Ian. 
Marquez, the thrower on that goal, has been torching the Black Sheep defense all game. That's his third assist to go along with his four goals that he's come down with, skying piles, skying packs. I'd love to see the Black Sheep do something different to change up those matchups or neutralize some of those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Maybe recognize that you need to be peeling some other defenders off the break side to provide help with those challenging one-on-one -on -one matchups. I'm surprised, Ian. We've seen Mubidisc adjust their force. They're now forcing, when Black Sheep are shooting to the left, they're forcing backhand towards us. It'd be interesting to see how that would change the shape of Mubidisc's offense if Black Sheep were to make the same adjustment and start and force the other way, cut off those same third shots down that far sideline. They really are sinking them in the back of the net. Yeah, and as you say that, we're starting to notice up here in the booth in the last five minutes or so, the wind and the gusts have really started to kind of settle down compared to what we were experiencing earlier in the match. Allowing the discs to be a bit more <laughs> settled. And as expected, pit call up field, Cox with his hands in the air gesturing saying, Whoa, stop your stall count, mate. There's stuff going on upfield. Just a communication as players return to the stack. So, half an hour left in it. Maybe just five points clear. 12 to 7. As the handers of Black Sheep will move between themselves. Horvath coming through. Taylor looks. At the upfield, a very long time, quite consistently in this game, Ian. Be nice to see Black Sheep getting a bit more flow, moving the disc and changing the angle of attack much faster, rather than relying on athletic grounds like that from Fagan, which she's been doing all game long. Well, you're not going to catch me playing devil's advocate to that analysis. <laughs> Big backhand, high release from Cox. And that's just inexcusable. Uh, that disc is catchable. It's right there. You need that momentum to get back in this game. Wasted opportunity from the hand of Leon Kiefer. I always say, Ian, if you can touch it, you can probably catch it. Big shot is responding. A play made, but doesn't come up with it. Taylor. Yeah, it, didn't have body position. Yeah, well, the thing is, Taylor's giving up several inches to Gonzalez Betancourt, but he had inside position, and rather than staking his claim. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, talking about staking claims, Ian, Adam Lothian has arrived in this match, putting his name firmly on the near sideline of the pitch, and that is exactly what this line need to do one of this casual dropping discs in the end zone. So Fagan at the back of the stack. We'll see her initiate. Black Sheep love isolating strong players, but she will make a miscue throw directly into the defense. And a big shot's going to go up. Doesn't have enough time to make up the yards. Easy score for Wade Hankin in his rather odd choice. <laughs> trousers. Well, this sequence of events is kind of a microcosm of why Black Sheep are trailing so significantly at this stage in the game. Just kind of a, a careless turnover here from Fagan, who's otherwise performed well with grabs like those, throwing into a poach that was there. But after the turnover, I'm not seeing any defenders hustle and cover their matchups as if their lives depended on it jogging as that deep shot went into the end zone. At the very least, put your body up against that defender. Use Lothian as an example and pressure that receiver. Don't let him come down with that without any footsteps up against his back heels. I may be making an enemy here, Ian, but I've been largely unimpressed with Taylor's performance thus far. Certainly in that point, you know, I, I Kind of said that he was, you know, he was looking upfield for a very long time as a handler. All of the handler set in that point were very guilty of doing that for Black Sheep. They kind of just wanted to to move the disc upfield so much that they just weren't really 
I don't know, just they were taking such a long time. I, I'm always a big fan of flowing offense, keeping the disc moving, allowing the cuts to develop because after that one person's coming, you know, you can change it, you can pop it back, move it around. And certainly to just see him jogging behind, just giving up on Hankin. The wind is up, you know, any kind of pressure. If you're gonna be on the shoulder, you never know. You know, it's just giving it away like this when you're you were, you know, 12 7 down, making it 13 7, two points away from Mubi just taking out this game, making their job very, very hard. At the moment, Black Sheep are looking up a mountain if they want this game. And they need it. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> well, Tona, I'm glad we're singing from the same hymn sheet. So the sun is shining. The weather is hot. As we see the business end of this mixed pool H game. Horva on the disc, finds Jones in the middle. Had Bilek, didn't like it. Finds Lothian far sideline. Horvath very free up the line, but a deep shot from Fagans. Gonna take the attention of Adam Lothian who overthrows the bid doesn't come from Fagan, just perhaps a little too far even to make the layout play. Well, yet another update on the atmospheric conditions here. After things had subsided for a few minutes, it does feel like the wind has shifted now and this looks like a much more decisively upwind, downwind stretch with Mubi Disc needing to work the disc upwind. And tracking that disc that didn't seem to be affected by the breeze at all. Taylor not on the mark, playing a bit of help defense. Oh, a push pass for an attempted score. Not enough spin on that whatsoever from the hand of Pedro Padilla Marrero. Cox is going to center to Taylor. Fakes off Horvath, who had separation. Lothian is going to be convinced to huck it again. No one's available to receive it. A poach off of Lothian. Shutting down Horvath, who was very free. Bilek's going to streak deep. And again, he's the arm of Lothian further away than his previous shot to the end zone. Throws it even more than he needs to. Just, I think Ian, perhaps getting a little bit frustrated and trying to just go for the immediate score rather than actually looking at where the receiver is going, putting it out to space that they can collect it in, even if that space is shy of the end zone. I think Lothian perhaps just trying to bomb it, you know, getting a little perhaps desperate. I believe that's what we like to call hero ball <laughs> and it never serves teams well. So back in play will Perdilla bring the disc as we see the beautiful aerial shot. And there we go, Fagan coming up with the goods off the back of Lothian's overthrow. But a huck and deep perhaps, as we see, as you call it, Ian will maybe get a little shot of the flags in a little while to show the left to the right wind direction of this pitch. Cox on the goal line. Finds Lothian deep, and that is a much needed hold. Score now, 13-8, with 24 minutes left on the clock. So, a messy, messy point for Fagan going to work for her team and a section of footwork that can only be described as textbook from Lothian getting free far right side of the end zone. As we see the stunning luscious green fields. We had the, uh, the grass on the show pitches mowed yesterday evening yeah, after the, the play. The grounds crew are really the unsung heroes. So many organizers and volunteers behind the scenes and 
They were out here as some light rain showers were starting to sprinkle. Everyone had left the field for hours and they were just getting to work as the sun was setting. We have had some beautiful sunsets and sunrises here at the field. Volunteer crew doing an excellent job though, as you say, of keeping things in great shape for the players here at the World Championships as a miscue falls into the hands of Hannah Stevenson. Is that going to be too much? Can she make the bid? Oh, an attempt, but just sails out of the hands. That's the second shot I believe we've seen where uh, the layout hasn't quite come good from her. But the zone once more, Stevenson clogging, very close. Known for his poach blocks, very handy person to have in the cup. Big hammer over the top, players underneath it, goes to the tall man, unsurprisingly. Nice work with the throws of movie disc. Scuba over the top, good movement. Hutchison did a great job of tracking. Now, player available, very far side, difficult place to hit over there. Good spacing from Mubidis though, giving each other space. Oh, Cooks and inches away from the defensive bid and Mubidis bring it to within one of the game. Great strategic call once again by the Black Sheep. Utilizing that zone, again, almost forcing a turnover, inches away from Cookson's finger. You were talking, Ian, at the start of this game about how in the matchup against Slow White, Mubidisc just had just all of the 50-50s discs coming into them and being successful. Well, I think if there is fate favoring either side in this match, it certainly has to be favoring movie disc once more. Disc just sailing out of reach of Annie Chen. And then that, it almost looked from this perspective like the wind bumped the disc up above the outstretched hand of Cookson. He was that close, <laughs> you know, but one centimeter above that extra little loft. But First match point opportunity now. Can Black Sheep hold on a little longer? Disc is picked off by Movie Disc. Jimenez is going to throw a hammer. Is this going to be game? Yes, it is. A hammer score 15 8, and that is the game. Movie Disc. Rightfully delighted, celebrating in the sunshine here on the Tuesday. It's been an uh, interesting match, Ian. There's been some great points. There have been some highs and lows. A lovely way to finish, though, hitting the other side, not favoring the far left side of the field. It's been really enjoyable to watch. Well, this is why these teams come to the World Club Championships, right? You wouldn't traditionally see a Spanish mixed team facing off against a Kiwi mixed team. And as we see the handshake line, both teams forging new bonds, committing to spirit of the game. And Mubidisc really seizing the opportunities that were given to them after that Black Sheep offense got out of rhythm, converting more breaks and applying more pressure on a Black Sheep offense that really did not find its rhythm, especially in the second half of this game. Well, we talked about the breaks, looking at the uh, the score sheet for the second half, movie disc with four breaks of score, just there's nothing that Black Sheep seems to be able to do to stem the bleeding, unforced errors all over the field. Really, they were getting the Ds, they just weren't valuing them and treasuring them nearly enough. Shame to see that happen, but uh, ultimately, Movie Disc, I think, deservedly winning this match. So let's have a look again at some of the highlights of this pool play match. Well, Ricardo Marquez was a force to be reckoned with. 
scoring four goals, racking up three assists for the movie disc offense. Some <laughs> athletic looks and athletic grabs from the Black Sheep squad as well, but ultimately not enough effort as the Spaniards emerge on top in their final game in Pool H. Yeah, I think it's uh, certainly tip your hat to New Zealand for the most athletic and big plays, but Moby Diff's just that little bit more patient and cleaner offense. It's been a pleasure to call this game with you. I'm Hannah Penderbury. I'm Ian Toner. Stay tuned for more action coming with you very, very soon. Catch it early. Help us teach kids about cancer symptoms through Ultimate Frisbee Clinics. Join us and speak up.